Isn't that magnificent? Good morning. We got a great picture here of the Dome of the Rock and the sun rising. The Dome of the Rock in the background of the cemetery. And we got Dominus Flavit on top of that little cypress tree there. The Seven Arches Hotel above the Dome of the Rock to the right. Let's see if we can line up the Dome of the Rock a little bit better by just going back here. Today is going to be a very quiet day, socially in Jerusalem, no traffic in all of Israel because of Yom Kippur. As the entire nation is fasting and praying, 25 hours fasting, no meals, no drinking. I'm not sure about the drinking part. Maybe they drink water, but no, no meals for sure. There we got the Ascension Tower on the left and the Franciscan Tower of the Savior on the right. And then the very right, much lower down, the Lutheran Tower of the Church of the Redeemer. And then we've got two colorful mosques that are a bit hidden now, except for the one on the right, to the right of the Lutheran Tower. You can see it protruding over the roof of the Franciscan Church of the Savior here. Maybe we can go down a little bit more and catch those before they are turned off. The other towers were illuminated until a moment ago. Yeah, it is turned off. Uh, the other mosque is turned off. Just the one over by the Lutheran tower is still, the mosque of Omar is still lit up. I would like to have been down at the Western Wall, but I wanted to go there last night for the German Friday evening, uh, but I didn't get to do it. Things went late because of other activities here and hopefully I will make up for it this evening or sometime today. Not a single car, even on Shabbat there are always some and there will still be possible, well I'm not sure if anybody at all will be out on the street, probably nobody at all. So there you see the colorful uh, lit up mosque here. I'm pretty sure that's the Mosque of Omar, right there near the entry to the Holy Sepulchre. So, good people, here we are. Today, I love the readings today. They point to a major pivot point of all humanity. And I'm not going to talk about religious faith, first of all, just human faith. So there is a car. That's a security car, and there's another one behind it. So their security vehicles are obviously on the roads. I think also emergency ve vehicles can be on the road if you have an emergency and, and God forbid you need to go to a hospital. All these things are possible. So the point I want to address today is coming straight out of the readings. And it's kind of a correction for us human beings. <clears throat> Sometimes we think that everything is just physical. What's important is how much money I have, the stuff I have, the real estate I own. And these are all very important because we are people uh, that have a physical life. We need to eat every day. We need to drink. We need to have water. We need to get rid of all the waste. We need to 
to uh, develop our life, which means also providing the food and providing the water, providing shelter. That means then construction, houses, cities, it means also transport to services. So there's a lot of physical, but actually the most important dimension of our lives and I'm not talking from a religious faith point of view. I'm just talking about, let's say, from a human being, uh, just human being to human being point of view, is faith. And I mean faith in a sense of trust, of how we relate to the person beside us. And since we really can't know their thoughts unless they reveal them to us, then we go on trust. We think we figure them out. And because we have a relationship for a while, like a little child with the parents, they have a great trust in their parents who have been good to them, extremely good. In fact, all the good they have has been delivered by their parents. And then, except for their breath, <laughs> and well, we can debate a few of those things. And the same thing with then with the siblings between each other as a relationship of trust. Of course, that can be damaged and hurt. But uh, let's say from the basic start up, you count on your sibling being favorable to you, being good to you. And you count on that. You, you reckon with that. You build with that. Um, that's taken for granted. It's about that um, trust. And then you also have a sense of solidarity and we want to help those in need us the ones especially the ones we love that are close to us that are so meaningful in our lives and we see them in trouble we want to jump in because most likely they have jumped in for us before if it's just to mop up a cup of tea that got spilled if it's to somebody got hurt or somebody is a little sick and needs food uh, need something purchased, some medicine, we go and do it. We are, we are beings of solidarity. We, we stick together, we defend each other. And one of the biggest experiences I had of that at a massive human level, universal you could say, was at 9-11 in New York. The way people held together and helped, people that would never have spoken to each other. And it's a, it's a natural that comes in even to say the animals in the forest in a fire, they don't attack each other. It's about joint animal survival vis-a-vis -vis the fire. And nevertheless, we give more credit to the possessions the other has and that I have. And we, and we enter into the fields of jealousy and of antagonism and envy and anger and competition and aggressiveness and hostilities and we even break down communication and we break trust and we break confidence and we break um, we break uh, communication all kinds of mutual support and help and maybe even we get so bad that we rejoice over the evil that happens to others And this is the collapse of human society. Or maybe we even drive the evil and we can denigrate others, we can blacken them, we can um, demonize them. And then the impossibility of encounter emerges. And when we can't encounter people, we must figure them out from a distance and so we have prejudice, ideas we had heard about them because we never talked to them. It's an amazing thing, you know, when you talk to somebody that's completely different from you. I, we could ask a simple question right now. Have you ever spoken personally with a Muslim? Have you ever had a coffee with a Muslim? Maybe it's easier today to say we had a coffee with an atheist. Um, in our world, but when I was a child, that would also have been difficult. I didn't know any atheist. And have you ever 
talked to a North Korean. I've met many South Koreans here in the Holy Land on pilgrimage. In fact, yesterday or the day before, there was a Korean Franciscan here. So, if we don't meet the other, then we only have the idea about the other that we have heard from hearsay. And hearsay is not always positive. And so we have prejudice. And the reason I mention all these things uh, this morning is the readings we have today are about the breakdown of all walls between people divided. And there's an awful lot more background here that we would love to deal with. And the gospel reading actually comes in very strongly on this. You know, if you're the mother of an Olympic winner. I just read the story of a couple of new chemistry Olympic winners yesterday. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And actually one of them, his name is Jumper, and I was curious to know, but there's no, I can't find any information. He's a young fellow, he's not yet 40 years of age. And there was a famous physicist uh, from NASA who worked in the Shroud of Turin as a hobby and made a great discovery with Jackson about the 3D image quality of the Shroud of Turin. And his name was Jumper. And I was wondering if there's any connection between this guy who was from Arizona, I think, and the Jumper who was also working out in Arizona. Maybe he's not from Arizona, the new Nobel Prize. Maybe he's from a different state, but he's out there somewhere, uh, out in that direction. And uh, Jumper was the discoverer uh, with Jackson of the 3D information on the shroud, but maybe you're the, I was looking for the mother and the father and I don't know who they are, you know, but the parents of that guy must be very proud of him, must be thrilled over him. And that's such a great treasure for the family. The relationships are much more than physical. The relationships are, uh, are a greater treasure uh, than money. Relationships are a greater treasure than property. Uh, if the other guy has more or less than me, is less significant than the fact that I'm his brother and sister. This is where it's at. And so the Gospel points out that Mary's greatness as mother of Jesus is not the fact that she was the physical mother, but because she heard the word and believed. The relationship through hearing the word and believing. And this is amazing, amazing uh, language. And then there's no division between peoples that's greater than the bond we have as image and likeness of God. There's no division between people. And because of all the visions we have built up, then we need redemption. And there's a lot more about that to go in on the spiritual uh, and theological uh, level, but we won't do that now. But just to wake up to the fact that the response we need today in the world is not physical. We cannot make peace just by physicalities. They can be a great help to open up gestures, to offer a meal, to offer hospitality, but it has to be the attitudes of the heart and it will never be made by weapons. And this is the importance also of Yom Kippur, a day of turning back to God and to each other and asking for forgiveness, an amazing day. An amazing day, and we pray today that this day will be very fruitful in the lives of many people, and especially of the Jewish people, that they will have a great day of reckoning with God, of re reflecting, a day of great blessing. The barriers between persons and peoples and nations and countries aren't physical, but they are all these deformations of the soul. We need a culture of encounter and mutual familiarity family, human family, culture, reconciliation, mutual appreciation, mutual support, collaboration, profound friendship, sisterhood, brotherhood, lasting covenants, and that's the language of the psalm, the covenant, the new covenant, the lasting, everlasting covenant. This is humanity. This is humanity at its best. Great covenants, mutual support, friendship, engagement with each other, building up the family. May that be our prayer today on this Yom Kippur day and on our own family day, everywhere we are today, to, to rebuild relationships, to trust others, to help others, 
to teach that to the children, the grandchildren, to live it out with the siblings and the neighbours. And the change we want for our world, we have to become ourselves.